Hello again, it's Mr. Peak, your YouTube shop teacher, and you are watching a temporary video, a three-day auction of Pete Bay, and this is Pete Bay number 2A. There are 25 items or groups of items, tools, shop supplies, and things like that. And again, the purpose of what I'm doing here, and most of you know what I, who I am and my channel, Mr. Pete 222 Tubal Cane. But I'm uh, 80 years old and I've got to reduce the inventory, I've got to get rid of duplicates, I've got way too much stuff and uh, this will benefit you and it'll be a loss for me. Uh, it sickens me to have to sell my treasures but that's exactly what I'm doing here and uh, I do not set the prices, you set the prices. That's very clear, make that very clear you set the prices. Anyone can bid on this auction. You do not have to be a subscriber, but you do have to live in the U.S. I will not ship out of the U.S. I would like to be paid by cash, check, or money order. Please pay promptly so I can get on to the Pete Bay 3 and so on. I'd like to do one of these every week or 10 days, but it's quite a job because of the shipping. Shipping is expensive, and I'll put those prices down here. I, I can't do anything about that. Even the smallest box costs $10, so consider that. I will combine shipping if upon request. Uh, I think I've said it all other than I have quite a few rules now. I want you to see the Pete Bay rules, and please observe them and be honorable in your transaction. If you bid, it is a commitment to buy, so please go by those rules. Now, after I show you the rules, then I'm going to go through these items here one at a time and describe them in great detail, and that'll take a long time. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can skip around. Some of you enjoy just looking at this merchandise. I do. <laughs> so... Uh, my loss is your gain. Oh, well, now I sound like a flim-flam man, like Art Fern. All right, let's go to the uh, <laughs> eBay. <laughs> eBay. Pete Bay. Pete Bay. Somebody asked me, well, what's your uh, your eBay name? Uh, there is no eBay. Uh, th this is it. Pete Bay. <laughs> All right, let's go. In review, this is Pete Bay number two. It's a silent auction, USA bidders only. And the auction, of course, has already begun on Saturday morning. And it will end three days later, Monday at approximately midnight. I'm going by 11 p.m. Central Standard Time, and there are the dates. And there is my email address. Please do not use any other email addresses that I may have shown. And no questions, please, and the comments are disabled. I'm just trying to do the best possible job of describing these tools and equipment. Now, when you bid and send me an email, please use this approximate format here. This is just a sample saying, good morning, Mr. Pete. Here are my bids, always giving the item number and the name of the items, the tools, and the amount that you are going to bid. And again, make it odd amounts like $27.99 because otherwise there will be some uh, uh, repeats, duplications, uh, tie bids and all of that. So I don't want that. Here, Here's another example of how to bid, just very simply. And this one was put in by Roy Rogers. And here are the rules for Pete Bay bidding, and this is a silent auction. Sorry, I cannot accept bids outside the USA. All items are used and sold as is. Sorry, no returns. And then please put your bid to that email address. Bid what you feel the item is worth to you. Bid more than once if desired. Number five, you will not be able to see other people's bids. And then here are the prices. I know it's outrageous, but that's the post office for you. I try to get things in the uh, items in the smallest box as possible, but that's what it is, it is going to cost. 
seven tools will be mailed by priority one or two days after payment is received and again there's the type of payment that I want winners will be notified one day after bidding I have two tables of tools this is just an overview before I start the description so you can see if there's something here that might interest you we got tools Precision, regular tools, shop supplies, some items in perfect condition, some not. So this is table one, and here is table two, mainly shop supplies of all kinds on this table. And there will be 25 or 26 items in all. And now I am starting the description. Let's start out with item number 25, and it is a Union brand combination square with the head, the protractor, and the center finder. Light rust here that needs to be removed with a Scotch Brite. You got a good bubble here. The protractor is easy to read. Union were good tools, even if you've never heard of them. They've just been out of business that long. I'm not sure who bought them up. The, pro the uh, head has a good bubble, and believe it or not, still has the scriber. All parts are here, so there's a, really a nice tool. Number 25. 26 is a Sterrett 1 to 2 inch micrometer, number 436, last calibrated in 91. Now you're not going to get this standard here. That's mine and I just put it in there to show you that it almost zeroes out. I'm not going to take the time to adjust it, but you of course will. Again, you do not get this. Do not. Ratchet works fine. You got the lock there and it is a sterret. Wouldn't that look nice in your toolbox? Number 26. I forgot to mention, but the first item here, number 25, would require a medium box for $17 or whatever I told you. This will fit in a small box for $10 or $11. 27, you get five or six items here, so to start with, there's a set of thread re-threaders. One is missing. I've never used them, and the brand, can I read the brand? Yeah, it's KD pretty common and in this little package I've never used them never even had them open so there must be directions in there and these are screw extractors something like an easy out but they're much more short and stubby I do not see a brand this is a not a JK but a craftsman offset screwdriver one of those little punches, I think for punching uh, holes for, for a hinge, where you're going to drill the screws for a hinge, there is a set of feeler gauges used. And what do we got here? Craftsman. I think they're for removing screws. Another Craftsman gadget. So you get all of that stuff number 27 and that'll all fit in the small box number 28 three pieces of brass and the diameter is uh, well that's 7 8 isn't it and they are approximately 8 inches long so you're getting three of them and they'll all fit in that small box if the post office doesn't let these destroy the box so that's brass. Oh, and I did face off one end to see how it cut, and you know, it cuts all right, and polish it up to show you that that is brass. McMaster car, that'd be $400 worth. Number 29, and I sold some of these in the last Pete Bay, but, and this is the original box. You saw that they were advertised in Atlas. A lot of the catalog showed this. So what you're getting here is this wonderful armature three-jaw chuck with the brass 
uh, jaws. This goes in the tail sock. That's the number two. And it locks. And what is the condition of the jaws? This is used, but, you know, they, they look all right. I don't think I've ever used this. So, again, you're buying it as is. And then the other one is just a common half-inch chuck. Looks okay. It is used. Number two, more staper. And you're even getting the key. So that's number 29. Back to these. I'm not sure I mentioned the brand. It's a Jacobs Chuck. Number 100. And there's the capacity. And the other one, of course, is also a Jacobs. And what is the number? Thirty-four. That's a common one, half-inch chuck. Now this will go in a medium box, so you're getting everything you see here as number thirty. We'll start out with this. This is a boring bar holder. Fits right in the, the uh, compound, and I just checked. This fits into my Atlas Craftsman lathe, I suppose. And I marked it as such that you could make a new T-nut and use it uh, in different sizes. I do not see the name on here. I thought it was an Armstrong. Armstrong made these, but so did other companies. So I, I really do not know who made it. I'm just guessing that it's an Armstrong. So here you're getting a, uh, a, bun a hodgepodge of chucks here. So you got a taper there and you got... Yeah, I should tell you what size it is. I'm having a heck of a time. I think that's just a 3 8 And here's some threaded Jacob's Chucks. And this is, I believe, a Supreme. Also with a thread. I think these are 3 8 Fine. So all of this stuff, number 30. But it costs $17 to ship. Number 31 is a nice Sterrett micrometer. And so number 436, 2 to 3. You do not get the standard. I just got that out of my other kit, same as before. You can see that it needs just a little bit of adjusting. Easy enough to do. And it's marked with someone's name. And the calibration date. It's got the, the lock and the ratchet. And here's the box with the number on it. I think it's the correct box. Maybe not. But in the box, get the notepad, original directions, and that. So there you go, number 31. You, you'd have to love this, wouldn't you? Number 32, three items here. We're going to start with this antique case Bowie knife. It says case right there, not in the best of shape. little crack here in the handle, but this is, I would consider collectible. Comes with the case, Arkansas stone. I don't think this belongs with it. It's just a, another item. And if you buy these, of course, you have to take this. It's a fake leather one. I'm pretty sure. 32. 33 is this little air engine, steam engine that I made uh, quite a while ago. I don't see the date on it. It's double acting. I think there is a video of this, maybe even with plans and everything. I don't really remember. It runs great. I'm not going to do that for you right now. A lead flywheel to give you a little idea of the scale. The flywheel is two and a half about and the overall height is about four inches. I have to clear out my models. Nobody wants them. My family doesn't want them. That's number 33. 34 are rotary files and burrs. Here you get it all. I think that everything in this little container here is carbide. Are they new or used? I think both. I've never used them. To be honest with you, I don't like this type of tool. So I think these are all carbide. Maybe that one's brand new. I can't get the lid off of it. And then on this other one, these would just be regular steel. Some in the containers. Does that mean they're new? I don't know. I really don't know. 
I don't know what that is. There's several of those. And uh, these are all little dental burrs, which means that they were dull when some dentist gave them to some machinist. But anyway, those will fit in your Dremel, the rest here in your larger grinders. All of this, number 34, and it'll fit in a small box. Okay, get your sights up here. Number 35 is a 12-inch Sterrett precision level in a homemade case. Kind of nicely made, but it's pretty old. And it did a great job of protecting this, though, didn't it? Is there a number on here? We'll see. Anyway, it's 12 inches. I better measure this. I don't see any rust on this, either. Yeah, it's 12 inch. Is it calibrated? I don't know. Oh, here's the Sterrett. This is Sterrett. Did I say that? I really hate to give this up. And then it's got, of course, the little cross level on this side, and the bubble is okay. The wrinkle finish here is, is real good. I don't see an owner's name on here, but I may be missing it. It is what it is. So there you go, number 35. And that'll cost a fortune to, uh, to mail because it is heavy. Figure on 20 bucks. I have in stock over 1 million drill bits, so I got to get rid of some. Here's a 7 16 I don't know what it is. Never used it, never seen one like it. And then here is a, a drill index, Hewitt, for numbers, but about half of them are missing. So you're getting this, but possibly with some of the bits that I'm giving you here, you can fill this. I don't know, I doubt it actually. But in this box, you got brand new drills. That's an unopened package. I don't know what size. Here are 5 30 seconds. Split point, 12 pieces, not necessarily. No, there's like about five or six of these. And right here we've got number 37 drill bits. Oh, and these are extra long. That's, I don't, well, maybe it is a dozen. Fast twist. Now it says eighth here. There's quite a few, but maybe it's a hodgepodge. I don't know. I can't go through all of them. There's too many. Hey, a brand new 5 16 And then all of these that are unsorted. Some are new, some are not. And they're, I, I started to go through these, but some of them are so small I can't read them. So that'll be your problem, number 36. Number 37 will fit in the large box. You're getting two Sterrett micrometers. This one is a number 436, 4 to 5. It's got names on it. I have not calibrated it or checked it in any way. It turns freely. Last calibrated in 91 or 81, uh, 91 I guess. So you're getting that. And the other larger one, which is also a 436, but it's a 5 to 6 inch with a name on it, calibration, got the little lock here, the other one does not. You guys that do larger work, there you are, you may have to calibrate them, you're buying as is. I've never used them. I don't do normally large work like that. I very seldom use a big micrometer. Number 38, I think everything in here is American made. There's a genuine channel lock. Needs a good cleanup. I don't know what this is. I'm thinking piston rings or something. I forgot. Here's an old one that looks like it's, no, it says made, it, it's a crescent. This is one I had since I was a teenager with my name on it and the orange marks and it's a Klein. Bernard and not very good shape but it's a big one. And this is 
questionable. This may be foreign. I can't read it. Here's a little Vaco, Vaco, lineman's pliers. This is a crescent with funny tips there. At first I thought someone had modified it, but and maybe they have. I don't know. Here's a channel lock. And finally, a crescent. All of that. 38. You cannot have too many punches. Number 40. All American made. Not for impact use. Craftsman. Pennons. A lot of craftsmen. Oh, that's a wards. Monkey wards. That's a little bit of a mushroom there. That's not real good, but it's... I'm not going to read them all. Too many. It's hard to find these little ones that aren't bent. And this one is bent. And I think... And this one is too. Throw them away if you don't want them. I didn't have the heart to. Craftsman. This one needs grinding. Center punch. And another pin punch. So you're getting all of those for number 40. I think they'll all fit in that small box. Can you tell that I'm cleaning drawers? This is number 41. I know it's taking a long time here, but people really want to know what they're buying. So this is a screw starter. Double-ended. I've never used it. There's a little inspection mirror that'll fit in your pocket. A little tubing cutter, rigid brand. Maybe for brake lines here is a Gasky or Ramo. You know what that's for? It's, this is used. It's got grease on it. That's for cleaning out grease circs. You hit it with a hammer. This is a, a little KD tool. I thought these were used for setting uh, points on GM cars. Could be wrong. Here's a seal driver, I think. Seal replacer, they call it. And it's an OTC. Awatana or something like that. Good stuff. They made good stuff. I think they're in Minnesota. Here's a Miller Falls rusty offset screwdriver, a general, no, ace, they call these repair reamers, looks to be very good, a set of U's, there's a bent one in there, feeler gauges, I don't know why I have so many feeler gauges, you know what that is, and, uh, and this is a bluebird. That's for uh, Zerks, I believe. Or tires. Of, no, Zerks. It's a pretty good set of Allen wrenches. And you know what this is? A spark plug starter and remover because, because it's flexible. For that hard to reach one. You recognize that name? And all of that's number 41. 42 is a bunch of hones. Since I got those great hones from Lance, I really don't use any of this. I'm not going through every one of these because there's just too many. All these square ones. I don't know what that is. So you get all of this plus what I'm going to show you. What the heck is this? Some little hone or something. I don't know. Okay. These two, this will take a big box. Here is half of a slip stone. They're rounded here. Really should be thrown away, but I'll let you throw it away. I think that's hard, Arkansas, but I'm guessing. 
a round hone, a little Norton, a little car carborundum square. Most of these are used. There's a the good slipstone for you woodworkers out there for your chisels. I think that's for sickles and size. And finally, a Norton sharpening stone. You know, it looks the same on both sides, doesn't it? There it is. It's a fine India, is what it is. So all of that's 42. Some pretty good stuff in there. Okay, you guys, I'd like to use a file, number 43, all of these file handles. I got way too many of them. Look, these are still in the container. There's five out of, uh, five of them. And the, these are the ones that I call them screws on. Because you don't just drive the file in, you screw them on. Like this one. A lot of these are brand new, not all. All different sizes. You even get a metal one. Take the good with the bad. Boy, there's a lot of them. I should throw this away right now. Because <laughs> a mouse had its way with that. But if you want to round it off on your sander, you can. Or throw it away when you get it. These were, again, my favorite. These screws on as opposed to one like this where you just drive the file in there and then it, to me they, they come out. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot for this whole box. 43. Lots more fasteners and you know what stuff this stuff costs. So these are eighth inch roll pins, but they're only three eighths long and there's not a thousand but there's a lot. Maybe there is a thousand. Maybe there's, I'm not going to count them. <laughs> but I better show you what they are. Real little short roll pins. And then in, uh, in this box bag, what I did is I had, a, I had a container like this with snap rings, small ones. And the it wasn't worth shipping the container, so you're getting a, a bunch of and I think these are inside snap rings, not the outside kind. And if... Oh yeah, they came out of here. These came out of this container, which I'm going to throw away. And this is interesting here. And I've had these for 20 years. And there's, I think, 12 packages, I'm not going to count them, of snap rings. External and internal, mainly little ones. For instance, here's 10 of them sealed in that size. I, you know, I'm not going to go through all of those, but it'll give you a little idea of what's in here. Slow your video down if you have to. I should be showing you the back side. That there is something in every one of these, but some are very small. So you get all of that. And then, right here, that's not a full box, and I probably, I might put these in a baggie, but these are 3 sixteenths by 3 quarter. I don't know, what would you say, maybe a hundred in there. And then the other one, again, not full, but there's a heck of a lot of eighth inch, a very common, nice size, eighth inch by one. Don't go by that 300. I don't know how many is in there. You can count them. And here's a Dorman type of container with lock washers. Not necessarily full. I don't know. Same with this. You know what I need to... I need a screwdriver to open that. But there's a lot of Woodruff keys in there. So everything that I just showed you there, number 44, and it'll take the big box. I just cleaned out another drawer, number 45. Here's an Albert Champion spark plug gauge. 
You know what that is. This is a stud remover. I've never used it, but it obviously is used. And the brand is, it says USA. I can't read it. I give up. Puller for batteries. Offset feeler gauges. Here is a Proto wire stripper. Yeah, Proto. You guys that like S and K tools, here is a little renewal kit, they call it. Actually, it's a repair kit for 3 8 drive S and K. Made you know where. Bunch of uh, hex keys, a seal remover. I bought these when I was a teenager, Craftsman thickness, and an offset Phillips screwdriver, number 45, medium box. Everything you see here is, uh, stop. Number 46, these are masonry bits, lots of them, brand new and used. So there's a handful of little ones and a big one. Big one looks used. Those are new, Black & Decker. Now just because they're in the tube doesn't mean they're brand new either. Sometimes people stick them back in, so... But that one's new. I hope to never drill another hole in concrete myself. I don't know what that is. And then in this box, you know, there are more, a lot more. Long ones, short ones, little ones, big ones, new ones, used ones. All of that is number 46. Both containers here now. I've got too many brass fittings. Number 47 is everything that you see here. It'll take a medium box. We got new, we got used. For instance, here's a flare fitting. That's new. There's a compression. All kinds of adapters, big and little. Hope there's something there that you can use. I can't possibly go through all of this. You plumbers, repairmen, how much it is? 400 bucks? Number 48, you get a Colton file cleaner without the little probe, but in good shape. A Craftsman chisel, used. That's new. Dasco. There's a nice one. I think that's a Dasco. This looks like a wood chisel. I've never used it. You don't have to worry about breaking the wood or plastic handle though, do you? So we got, uh, that's brand new. So all of that for 48. 49, all kinds of woodworking bits here. So there's two in there. Whether or not that's the Milwaukee, I don't know. You're getting what you see. And in this box, which is Greenly, these are the tools, the cutters that I used to make my micrometer teaching aid years ago. So these are used. There's a Forestner, several Forestners. Those are all good things. And then finally here, and all kinds of Forestners here. I think that they're all used, all different sizes. You can drill a flat bottom hole. 49. Number 50 is a little solenoid engine that I made years ago. I think it runs off of 12 volt, but I'm not positive. It runs like crazy. There is a video of this someplace called Solenoid Engine Tubal Cane. 
So that's number 50, and that completes the 25 items that I've been talking about here. Hope that there's something there that you like, or maybe more than one thing. Get your hopes up now. To minimum $10 bid, you won't get anything for $9. So also look down in the comment, not the comments, in the video description for prices realized on video 1A. And that'll give you an idea of what things are worth and what you might have to bid, but bid for the fun of it, even if it's low. I will not notify you if you did not win the bid. Only winners are notified a day or two after the auction ends. Thank you for watching, and be sure and watch for Pete Bay 3 when available in the near future. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.